Formula One stock car racing returns to Manchester to the new Bellevue circuit for the auto parts at Hawthorne Super Prix in association with Motoring News. Three heats, a consolation and the final and this is heat one. It's a very wet and slippery track that's about to be used for the first time ever. It's Formula One stock car racing. Here they come, the white toppers at the front, the novice drivers, then the yellows, the blues, the reds and the superstar grade men at the back. The green flag waves as the steward of the meeting, Steve Abbott, gives the signal for a good clean start and away they go. With one or two of them already discovering how slippery the first turn is going to be. Our onboard camera is with Frankie Wayman Jr. And as he makes his way into turn one, he's about to discover just how treacherous it is. As I say, it's a very wet road. The back of the car comes round. He's able to carry on, but you can see there great puddles in the inside line. You could argue it's a bit too wet, but Frankie Wayman Jr. gets away with it. Let's hope it dries out, and as it does so during the course of the night, the speeds are going to increase accordingly. So the leaders are coming through then at the end of lap one. Somebody running very wide indeed in number 10 there, getting away with it. We've got one car slithering its way off. 73 is Rob Cowley. Somebody else spins off in avoidance. Paul Harrison in number two is getting sideways ahead of them. He's survived, and there is number two, Paul Harrison, then coming towards us. Turning his way now into turn one once again. He's right on the tail of Phil Pitlam in car seven. Three more slither out wide, that four go wide, and Frankie Wayman Jr. grabs another couple of places. Number one, Junior Wayman then moving his way up through the order. Grip at a premium, lots of power, limited grip, and there in 198, Nigel Wally, the race leader. He's coming through that very short and stubby looking car, and on a wet road, a wet shale road as well, the car's getting ever more dirty. A nightmare for that for us. Nigel Wally it is up front, back on board with Junior Wayman charging his way across the line into turns one and two somebody cutting the grass there on the inside trying to scrabble their way through 198 though Nigel Wally it is the man in the lead he's got 446 Steve Bruin behind him three abreast four abreast at times they come through one car is stationary there that's 54 Stuart Truesdale now is he going to be able to be avoided as there is the lead car 198 and a spin for number 10 93 gets all crossed up and 262 on the inside there as well being delayed Clinton Dorrell in 262 trying to get going again once again number 10 James Potter having another drama meantime the leaders go through the start marshal indicates the driver's positions and it's 198 Nigel Wally still in the lead number 93 Stephen Taylor being monstered there by 26 Ray Williams who's looking on the inside number two ahead of the pair of them is Paul Harrison and there he is in a filthy car the drivers themselves getting more and more caked in the shale visibility ain't going to be that easy on their goggles or on their visors depending on which they prefer as the race wears on 54 back in the race Stuart Truesdale we've got a glimpse of him there he's along the back straight they go 446 Steve Booth trying to make his way now up through the order somebody else sliding out wide one car heads to the in green across the line they come 262 Clinton Doral under pressure there from car number two Paul Harrison who goes diving up the inside, there's a bit of leaning going on, 26 Ray Williams gets pushed out wide, 391 Andy Smith up the inside as well, and 21 Mark Gilbank going with him, Mark Gilbank in 21 on the inside, but the door closed, 391, the very force but Andy Smith keeps the place, and locking up there, 21 Mark Gilbank. Up they come, across the line, 198 there, with number one, Junior Wayman having a go on the inside, that's for the lead, and through he goes, Frankie Wayman Junior goes through, up into the lead, we've gone past halfway, 217 there, losing out, Rob Perry, Fast goes Junior Wayman put one lap on the 217 car. It's still wet, it's still slippery, but a dry line, a faster line is appearing now. Junior Wayman looking as though he's going to get himself in the record books as the first man to win at the Bellevue circuit and he's reopening. Up he comes now, making his way across the line. Junior Wayman, the class of the field. Turning his way through the first couple of corners on the back straight now. Accelerating his way down towards the final pair of corners. Wayman swings his way through, back on the power, being careful all the time. Getting two sideways and lose time. 4-4-16 Booth going through. The rest of the place is there. 291, Dan Squire, the former mini stocks ace, turning his way through. One of the drivers unusually not using one of the big roof fins. Car ahead of him there employing the same tactic. Total contrast. 391, Andy Smith. Andy Smith getting himself up into third place now with five more laps to go to the completion of the first F1 stock car race here at the new Bellevue circuit and Junior Wayman from Steve Booth, that's the top two. There is Junior Wayman, he's on target for a historic win. It might only be a heat, but it's the first race of this new circuit nonetheless and he desperately wants to win it. He's got slower cars ahead, 93 there, Steve Taylor to be disposed of. Is Junior Wayman gonna put the bumper in? Yes, he is. Get out of the way, he says. And Nigel Wally, who led earlier on, is about to be pushed aside as well. 
opposite lock, down the straight, there is the lead car, you can barely see the one on the side, but about to that 198, Nigel Wan is much stubbier car there, his number one junior Wayman, a very fast, a very forceful and successful Formula One stock car racer, he laps Nigel Wan in the early leader, but Nigel Wan fancies his chances, he tries to come back at him, gets the car caught up on the muddy inside line and loses it, you've got to be in the top six to go into the final, so that must cost Nigel Wally dear. Here is Junior Wayman, back on the far, up across the line. No pressure from behind, Steve Booth in second race is a long way back now, there's 26 Ray Williams. They turn their way onto the back straight, now does Junior Wayman get the bumper in to get rid of the traffic, or does he look for a gap? At the moment he doesn't really have to worry, he's not being held up at all by 26, and there he is across the line, onto the last lap here at Bellevue. Turning his way to the first couple of corners, Junior Wayman I think is going to have to get the bumper in, if only to make doubly sure that he gets round to the finish safely. Here he comes now into the last corner. Sliding a bit wide is 26 Ray Williams. Ahead of him is 291 Dan Squire. But the checkered flag at Bellevue for the first time tonight goes the way of number one Junior Wayman to win the first heat of the Auto Parts of Holford Super Prix in association with Motoring News. The top six go through to the final. The checkered flag is displayed and only at the end of the top 12 coming through, that's the places that the lap scorers want to know about, will a red flag go out and that means stop racing. So, the cars come across the line, the top six make their way through, the rest of the place is being filled, and as soon as the top 12 have come home, so the signal can be given. And it's Junior Wayman who makes history by winning the first race here at Bellevue, and confirmation of the results. Junior Wayman, the winner, with Steve Booth taking second, third goes to Andy Smith in 391, ahead of Mark Gilbank, with Phil Smith taking fifth, and sixth to Paul Harrison. And those six drivers go through to the final to be joined by the top six from heats two and three, and also from the consolation. So a very happy Junior Wayman celebrates on his lap of honour an enormous crowd here at Bellevue to witness history in the making. Heat two here at Bellevue for the Briscoe Formula One Stock Car Super Prix is under suspension. Colin Nairn in 280 lost a wheel. If you have a loose wheel on the circuit, health and safety regulations say it's a waved yellow flag. And so the race under suspension. Very shortly, we're going to have a green flag to get the action back underway. The circuit is much drier than we saw for heat one. It is therefore much quicker. And this promises to be a very dramatic race indeed. 264, Gary Lenton in the queue of cars. We're heading for a green flag. 16 laps once again, but sadly, Colin Dan is not going to be a part of it. He is a spectator. Helmet off, Malakava off. The cars in the meantime make their way now up around the final corner. The green flag held high by the starter. And this time around, we should hear the sound of Thunder once again. Heat two about to get underway. There in 75 is David Cottrell, the yellow grey driver, turning his way to the last corner. The yellow flag still being waved. When he looks up, you should see a green one this time around. 3.07 behind him there. That is the car in the hands of Tim Warwick. The green flag flies. We're racing once again. Lots of smoke off the tyres there as cars charge their way out of the corner. 35, Neil Shenton goes a little bit wide. And 2.15, Jeff Nichols finds a way through on the inside there. 140, Andy Robinson goes through. He's being chased there by 493. And across the line they come then to complete lap one. Somebody else gets very sideways, very wide indeed there. Coming out of the last corner. Through in 218 there across the line. Goes Derek Furhurst, the man from Bolton. And number 70 coming through as well. That's John Walker. Three of them together, bouncing high, colliding with one another. 128, John Wright and 392. Andy Minton, they're heading for the tractors, they're heading for the flower bed. Oh dear. That's not going to impress the stadium owners. The tractor gets brought into the accidents as well. The sponsors' hoardings take a tumble. The flowers are churned up, and I don't think either of those cars is going to be able to rejoin. Even if they do, they'll have lost so much time. So we lose Andy Minton, we lose John Wright. We're about to lose 407 Craig Smith as well, who gets pushed wide there by 53 John Lund. Derek Fairhurst goes through in 218. More drama there is 407 Craig Smith getting involved again with 264 Gary Lenton as he comes across the line. Behind the pair of them in 35 is Neil Shenton. Somebody else gets sideways. It's Craig Smith again. I think a very hectic race. Derek Fairhurst in 218 pulls it up on the grass there. In the background, 75 coming through. That's David Cottrell. He's getting himself to the head of the group now. Ahead of him going through is 493. Meantime, the leaders come across the line. The race leader is 75. David Cottrell ahead of him. A car slides out wide. 
75, David Cottrell now trying to pick his way through the traffic. He doesn't want to be delayed by the back markers at all. Phenomenal power these cars have. 35 gets shunted towards the fence there. Neil Shenton put away by, I think it was Craig Smith, halfway. That's what the Union flag signifies. Great lap too. We've got eight to go. And it's David Cottrell in 75, the lead car. One or two more now starting to sit by the side of the road. But David Cottrell all on his own. He's under no pressure. He's not even that close to the back markers at the moment, which are going to delay him. There goes 140. That's Andy Robinson. He's tucked up behind 307. Tim Warwick, a rather sideways yellow top car in the background, I'm afraid, loses it and slithers onto the infield. But 75, David Cottrell aims to win this second heat and get himself into the final. And he looks odds on to do it at the moment. Here he comes up across the line. He's looking easy for 75. David Cottrell slides his way into the first turn, passing the stricken 136 Steve Jacklin car. He gets himself ahead in the process there of 307 Tim Warwick. 98 Les Spencer coming through in second place. There's 140. Andy Robinson getting in the way a bit now of the race leader. Has to look on the outside. Never mind trying to get past him. Push him out of the way. That's what the bumper's for. And David Cottrell does lean on 140. And Andy Robinson drifts wide. Up through the traffic then comes the yellow car of David Cottrell. Still chasing after him in second place is Les Spencer. We've got John Lund up into third place now. 53 Lundy charging up through the order. And David Cottrell goes through across the line. 140 is a lap behind him, but David Cottrell under no pressure. Here he is now, up towards the last couple of corners on the lap. Into turns three and four. Gets the power down, the back kicks its way out. Ever so dramatic, these cars with three laps to run. Thundering his way across the line. David Cottrell out on his own. We've got Matt Bennett up into fourth place now. Fifth and sixth, Jeff Nichols and then David Nichols completing the top six. They are going to be the drivers to qualify for the final. But it's still Cottrell, Spencer and Lamb the top three. There goes the leader. Two now laps to run. Passing Steve Jacklin's car once again. Stricken by the side of the road. 2-1-5 going through Jeff Nichols. That's the fifth place car. He might lose a lap if he's not careful. There is 75. David Cottrell turning his way through. Lots of oversteer. Gets the power down. Drives out of the slide. And across the line he comes with one lap to go this time. 75. David Cottrell turning his way now out of the left-hander. Boots it down the back straight. Another left-hander turns three and four combined and then up across the line. Heading for the checkered flag. He runs out wide into the very slow shale there that's all gathered on the outside line. But it's not really a handicap. So much was his lead. And David Cottrell comes through to win heat two here at Bellevue tonight. So David Cottrell the winner. Les Spencer comes home in second place and John Lund finishes third. Fourth over the line is Matt Bennett. Jeff Nichols finishing fifth. The top six completed by David Nichols. Place is filled. The red flag will go out in a moment to end heat two here at Bellevue. Another six drivers into the final. Heat three is coming up here at Bellevue for the auto parts at Halford Super Prix is about to get underway. It's 16 laps. The top six go through into the final. If they don't, they go into the consolation. They do have another bite of the proverbial cherry, but they want to get through by being in the top six in this race. Down goes the green flag. 19 it is. Steve Baxter who grabs an early lead. It's much, much quicker now the circuit than he was at the start of the night. It's rather dusty now. It's certainly much less slippery. And therefore, this is going to be a very fast heat indeed. 83 going down the back straight there is Teddy Williams up behind James Garrow. In 72, 137, Andy Jacklin spins it away. He gets back on the circuit and in so doing brings all the slippery shale with him. You can see with all that power how difficult it is to keep the car under control. 7-7 coming across the line there. One of the red grey drivers, that being Mark Brightmore. There's a spinner, there's a spinner, there's a car going the wrong way. That's 289 who rolls it backwards out of harm's way. 289, Alan Bedford going no further. 488 going through Andy Turner. There's contact going on behind him as well. Into the fence goes Andy Turner. He's joined there by number eight, Mick Harris. 76, Mickey Preston moving his way up through the field now. So you can see the speeds now having a real effect on the amount of cars going off the circuit. The amount of contact increasing as well as the drivers now are getting the speed up. They're feeling a bit more confident to put the bumper in as 185. Lenny Smith slides, slides, slides into the first corner and very nearly took Ken Hopes with him as well. If we can get Ken Hopes and John Lund in the same race, we can go for Lund of Hopes and Glory if we really try hard enough. Contact there, 383 Dave Johnson getting involved. The car briefly airborne, he gets away with it. He's got 180 Ray Witts, the former Hot Stocks and V8 Stock Cars champion on his tail. And Ray Witts now is saying to push him out of the way. Nose to tail, those two. Ray Witts in 180, the star grade driver slides a little bit, but there's a gap presenting itself on the inside. Does he need a second invitation? No, he does not. Ray Witts boots the power, gets through on the inside. 477 going through there behind him. Mark Brightmore recovering after running wide earlier on. 
180, Ray Witt's going through. 383, then Dave Johnson runs wide. 137 pulls off there and tucked up behind Ray Witt. He's 318. Rob's beat a former multiple Formula 2 stock car world champion, national champion, British champion. You name it, Rob won it. And this is maiden full year in Formula 1. 19, though, is still the man in the lead. Steve Baxter. The white roof driver goes down the back straight, locks up there. You can see the front wheel grabbing, turning his way through the last corner and about now to accelerate up across the line. Being chased in the process there by Lenny Smith in 185. 212, Frankie Wayman Sr. And he's got Mickey Preston right on his tail. And Mickey Preston going for it on the inside and through he goes. Mickey Preston in his second year of Formula 1 stock car racing. Well over 10 years ago, he won the High Edge Raceway in Buxton Banger Championship. Since then, he's racing Formula Fiat for these very bizarre uh, little Formula 1 stock cars powered by Fiat engines. And now Mickey Preston joining the big boys. And he's going great guns already up to blue grade. And Mickey Preston now up into the top three in this race. He's going to, I reckon, get himself even higher. He's closing on Lenny Smith. Smith in turn looking for a way past Steve Baxter. The man from Macclesfield though, Mickey Preston getting closer. And that's for the lead, side by side. Steve Baxter in 19, 185, right alongside him there. Lenny Smith and through he goes. Len Smith leads, gets the car on the grass, in goes the bumper. Mickey Preston puts him away and 19, Steve Baxter goes as well. The top two are in the fence. And so Mickey Preston, with some judicious use of the bumper there, gets rid of the top two in one easy manoeuvre. And that is where the real skill comes in stock car racing, knowing how much to use the bumper and exactly when to go for the contact. And Mickey Preston gets rid of the top two without involving himself, maintains the advantage. He's the new race leader, and he's got the white car, 180 of Ray Witts chasing after him now. There he is, Ray Witts. The flashing lights indicating he's a superstar grey driver. More contact as Rob Speak tries to dislodge Frankie Wayman Sr. And he does so. Up into third place now then goes Rob Speak down to fourth. Slips Wayman Sr. And old Frank, he's going to try and fight back if he can on young Robert. There he is. Accelerating his way now up over the line comes Rob Speak. Man in control is that man. 76, Mickey Preston comes across the line. Beautiful slide, throws the car into turn one. And Ray Witt, in contrast, in second place, being a bit more hesitant. He knows these bigger, powerful cars a bit better than Mickey Preston does. But Ray Witt's not being as flamboyant, and Mickey Preston is getting away with it. Rebuilt the car over the winter, and it's paying dividends. Over the line he goes. The car barely running in a straight line. We've got two more laps to run. And here is 76, Mickey Preston. He's raced in bangers, he's raced in hot rods, he's raced in Formula Fiat, and now in Formula One stock cars, he's got one more lap to go before he puts himself in the record books by winning tonight here at Bellevue. It's the first time that Formula One stock car racing has come to Manchester for 12 years. It's the first time ever it has been at this, the new Bellevue circuit. And 76, Mickey Preston comes through now to earn himself a place in history by winning at Bellevue tonight. He comes home the winner with Ray Witts in second place over the line for third comes Rob Speak confirmation of the results. Mickey Preston the winner then, Ray Witts and Rob Speak second and third. Fourth goes to Frankie Wayman Senior with Mark Brightmore taking fifth and Mick Harris completing the top six. Frantic work in the pits to try and repair the cars for the consolation or for the final. There's plenty of activity out on the circuit as well. The tractor and the dust buster go out to water the circuit to make sure the dust doesn't fly quite as much also to bring speeds down a little. And therefore, for this, the consolation that we're going to see in a moment is going to be a little bit more slippery than we've seen for the last couple of races. A huge crowd here at Bellevue this evening, and the circuit has proved popular with the drivers. This is their last chance to get into the final. The consolation about to get underway, you can see as the cars set off and struggle for traction, how much of an effect the dust buster has had putting the water down on the track. Here they come then, the front row, 7, Phil Bicknell, 207, Darren Smith, green flag, we're racing in 16 laps here at Bellevue, the consolation is go. 1 or 2 coming to grief there, a real old pile of them, 35, Neil Shenton gets involved, there's 54, Stuart Truesdale, Andy Minton has gone, 70, John Walker gets involved in all of that as well, hopefully they should be able to sort themselves out, but it really narrows the road, 7, Phil Bicknell gets delayed, another one goes backwards out of harm's way in car number 10. One or two more splodge their way across the grass, but hopefully they're all going to be able to sort themselves out as down the back straight they come then. 207 it is, Darren Smith in the lead at the moment. 128 there, John Wright, who we saw attacking the tractor in the flower bed earlier on, goes past 140, Andy Robinson is across the line, they come 383, Dave Johnson puts the bumper in, 
Tries to get rid of one 4 -0. The plan works. Up the inside he goes. Gets past, or does he? 73, Rob Cowley. They all interlock wheels there. one 4 -0. Hitches the ride on the back of 383. Rob Cowley gets away. Dave Johnson tries to pull away as well. There's car 72. James Yarrow there getting involved. A 1-4-0. Andy Robinson has not given up getting past Dave Johnson yet. 493 plows out of the corner. There is 72, James Yarrow. The car sliding their way out of the turn. 217, Rob Perry, the former Superstocks racer, goes through. John Wright tries to find a way past 226. Mark Webster. More contact. Another pile up. We lose 73 into the fence as well there. 1 to 8, John Wright has gone. So too is 226. Rob Cowley joining them in 73, so that takes three cars out of the race. 52 slides his way through there. The yellow top driver, 280, gets all crossed up. Colin there, and he lost a wheel earlier on. This is the first race he's done all evening. All four wheels staying on the car this time around, though. 35, Neil Shenton comes to grief with 217, 140, and Robinson goes up the inside, and 72, James Yarrow does likewise. 264 powering his way through. Gary Lenton is 26. Ray Williams comes back off the centre. 207 there, spins off. 207 has gone. Darren Smith throws it away. He was the leader. Not anymore, he's not. 291's involved in that as well. Dan Squire, the former Brisker Mini Stocks racer. 207 is going to be able to rejoin, but it's a long, long delay and a short, short lap. 1 to 8, John Wright with a punctured tyre pulls it up out of the race. Not been a good evening for him. 291, Dan Squire gets involved there with 140. Past the pair of them goes Gary Lenton in 264. Down the back, straight up the way the drivers have to soar away at the wheel, hoping for traction. Keeping the car in a straight line, leaning on one another there. 264, Gary Lenton gets pushed wide. Up the inside there in 493. Through goes 185, Lenny Smith with 207, the recovering Darren Smith, and there in 226, Mark Webster's back in the race as well. The car to look for though is now 262 because Clinton Dorrell is getting himself higher up the order, looking for the leaders. 185 there, which is Lenny Smith, gets sideswiped. The car slides his way through. Car number seven slithers off the circuit there. That's Phil Bicknell. Big spin, avoids the marshals. Number 70, John Walker gets himself airborne, crashes back onto the ground. James Yarrow gets past him in the very smart 72 car. John Walker is still sideways. 291, Dan Squire coming on behind him now. All over the grass there. Not exactly the ideal line. It shortens the lap, but it doesn't really do much to endear you to the officials. Another great pileup. We lose this time 274, I think, in all of that, which is David Gaunt. 291, Dan Squire battling his way through. There he is just ahead now of John Walker. There's 185 in there, Lenny Smith. 152, Neil Scoven gets involved with 26, Ray Williams, as they all try and rejoin. More contact, Dan Squire gets involved with Ray Williams. As he was trying to find a way past, he gets caught up in it. 262 though, Clinton Dorrell, the lead car coming towards us. Tucked up behind the white roof of John Walker. There is the leader, 262, Clinton Dorrell gets it sideways. He's got 152, Neil Scoven behind him. Passing 307, Tim Warwick, there's contact as John Walker smokes the barrier, bang, in he goes. Certainly narrows the road for the rest of them, he should be able to rejoin. We've had a black flag being displayed for 280, Colin Nan. Here he goes, 54, Stuart Truesdale, there's the leader, 262, Clinton Dorrell coming onto the back straight now. Looks as though he's going to be able to hang on to this lead as he turns his way now through the first turn. He's being chased still by Neil Scoven. Up along the back straight, two more of them disappear there, 307, Tim Warwick getting involved, 54, Stuart Truesdale is the other. Are they all going to be able to sort themselves out? I think the answer is yes, as through they come with three more laps to run. 262, Clinton Dorrell comes through, 152, Neil Scoven chasing after him. There's the leader, 262, Clinton Dorrell gets past James Yarrow, 265, Rob Bradsell's there. And very sideways, Clinton Dorrell loses it, he goes wide. Is that going to cost him the race? I don't think so, he's got enough in hand. But you can see there, if you run out wide where it's very, very muddy indeed, all of a sudden the speed disappears, the grip disappears, and Clinton Dorrell fortunately had enough in hand there. He's going to be able to hang on to this, but Clinton Dorrell makes a mistake, loses ground, and 26, Ray Williams, the second place man, the blue top driver is closing, goes all over the grass again, goes John Walker. There is the leader, it's 262, Clinton Dorrell going down the straight. Ahead of him in 152 is Neil Scoven onto the back straight now. Comes Clinton Dorrell. You can see the smoke pouring off the rear tyres. Driving this car almost to perfection, apart from making the odd error. But even so, he's going to get himself into the lead and get a win the heat. 26, Ray Williams chasing after him, but it's to no avail. The chequer flag goes down, and Clinton Dorrell it is who scores victory in the consolation. Ray Williams comes home in second place, and Dave Johnson in 383 completes the top three. Still, they're playing at war. 185, Lenny Smith, Neil Scoven getting involved. 217, Rob Perry's car caught up. Rob Bradsell gets involved. They all sort themselves out. A 
and Ray Williams having finished second also joins the car park. The result, Clinton Dorrell from Ray Williams and Dave Johnson, the top three, James Yarrow, Rob Ransell and Tim Warwick, the top six here at Bellevue. And that has now decided who goes into the final and history about to be made. The first ever final at Bellevue for the auto parts at Holford Super Prix and with it, the Ray Tilslit Memorial Trophy. Here at Bellevue, the auto parts at Holford Super Prix in association with Motoring News final is about to get underway. It is also to be run for the Ray Tilslit Memorial Trophy in memory of a great Formula One stock car driver who sadly died a couple of months ago. The green flag flies, we're racing here at Bellevue. 20 laps, the cars battle their way through with Steve Booth being an early spinner. 446 has gone. Steve Booth losing it then as he makes his way up towards the green flag, gets a knock, and now he's going to back his way off the circuit and try and fight back. They all go piling in. 318 Rob Speak bouncing there off the side of 98. Les Spencer. Across the line they come. Looking back to Junior Wayman's car then. He gets involved, you can hear the impact. Number two, Paul Harrison behind him as they come through. 180 Ray Witch getting involved with Rob Speak. That was made of both their chances. All over the grass they go. They're going to be able to rejoin, but I'm afraid they'll lose a lot of ground in the process. 318 Rob Speak them. The same number that Brother Wilf uses on his banger for Team Stinkbridge most of the time. Rob, he used to be 218 in Formula 2, can't have that, he's Derek Fairhurst's number. So Rob speaking 318, gets back on the circuit, but a long way back, Junior Wayman charging through. There's 75, David Cottrell, who won Heat 2, right on the tail of Mickey Preston in 76, who won Heat 3. Both of them there, looking for a way past 242, David Nichols as they come across the line. Mickey Preston absolutely charging his way through, all fired up, having won his Heat. On board again with Junior Wayman, there's more contact, bouncing his way there off another car. Boots it, gets the power down, down that back straight he goes. Somebody in trouble there. Making his way back onto the circuit, a lot of ground loss for 72, that's James Yarrow. Number two, Paul Harrison sliding his way through, 383, Dave Johnson goes by, the 180, Ray wins recovery, 318, Rob Speak behind him. 262, Clinton Dorrell, the man that won the consolation, chasing on as well. But Mickey Preston it is now, getting himself to the head of the field as 98 there, runs wide, there's Spencer giving a face to Junior Wayne, but in the process. Lifting off the throttle, Clinton Dorrell goes wide, James Yarrow goes wide, 215, Jeff Nichols goes through. He's got car number eight, the red top driver, Mick Harris, right up behind him. The light failing now as 109 there disappears. That's Phil Smith. Big, big spin onto the centre green as 180, Ray Wins trying to get past John Lund in 53. Dave Johnson ahead of them, all over the grass goes Paul Harrison at 98. Les Spencer is slow as well, he gets a knock at 383 and off he goes. Bouncing back onto the circuit, bang, straight into the side of him there, goes 446, Steve Booth. Remember, he had a spin even before the green flag, and Steve Booth, hopefully, when the pyrotechnics have finished, will be able to rejoin. Shovels Les Spencer's car out of the way. Junior Wayman, in the meantime, is coming through. That's his dad ahead of him in 212, Frankie Wayman Sr. 215, Jeff Nichols behind the pair. And old Frank, in his mirror, sees his lad behind him. Is he going to move over, or is he going to be pushed out of the way? He's going to get pushed out of the way, I think. Yep, he is. Up the inside goes young Frank, passing his dad. No pocket money for a week, but a place gained. Junior Weymer then goes through. He's making his way ever further up through the field now. Number two, Paul Harrison goes through. There's the race leader, though. 76, Mickey Preston. He's on target to win the first ever final here at Bellevue. And with it, the Ray Tilsley Memorial Trophy, assuming he can maintain this gap and keep them out. We're on board with now. Frankie Weymer Jr. at bay. He's just got past 307, Tim Warwick. Rumbles his way down the back straight, and there is Mickey Preston at work. In all this long front of the car, huge steering wheel as well. And a pretty narrow cab on a Formula 1 stock car. Through he goes, halfway for Mickey Preston. Got a lap number two there, Paul Harrison has 242. David Nichols is about to rejoin. Number 76 then, Mickey Preston goes through. Keep your eyes peeled for number one, Junior Wayman. That's the man chasing after him for second place, 21 coming towards us there. That being the car of Mark Gilbank. There is 21, he's about to try and find a way past 242, that's David Nichols ahead of him. Number 8, Mick Harris goes through. And Ray Witts with the light flashing, he's up alongside 383, Dave Johnson is through, they come. There's number 2, Paul Harrison, chasing after the recovering 109, Phil Smith. But all the time, Mickey Preston is the man in control, comes across the line, the start marshal there indicates the race positions to the drivers by his use of fingers. And number 8, Mick Harris getting onto the tail of 21, Mark Gilbank. Two. David Nichols gets a knock round, he goes, and Mark Gilbank spins himself out. Try to use the bumper and get rid of 242. That worked, but I'm afraid he spun himself as well. There is Junior Wayman then, moving his way up the order. Frankie Wayman Jr. is closing, closing, closing all the time, and a very committed number 76, Mickey Preston. 
215, Jeff Nichols has gone. That car now stationary by the side of the track. The 76 goes through. The laps are ticking away. He's got four or five back markers to work his way past. Now how forceful is the man from Macclesfield going to be? He's no stranger to contact racing, having raced and been very successful at high edge in Bangladesh in the past. But the difference between that and a Formula One stock car, pretty marked. Out of the turn he comes then. 180, Ray Witt's behind him on the track. A clutch of back markers that Mickey Preston has got to make his way past in a moment. There's 109, Phil Smith going down the back straight. 180, Ray Witt's ahead of him and Mickey Preston is closing on the traffic all the time. That's 318, Rob Speaker about to be lapped. You can normally do that to Robert. Somebody else there latching on up there. It's Andy Smith in 391, pulls a lap back there from Mickey Preston. Andy Smith storming his way past. It won't help him in the overall scheme of things, I don't think. But it does just enough to worry Mickey Preston, who fights back. He's learning well. He's got a few lessons there off Andy Smith. In the meantime, Junior Wayman is getting his way through the slower cars. Speed of tyres, lifts off the throttle, back on the power now, rumbling his way down the back straight. Very sideways cars behind him. I think James Yarrow again is getting crossed up behind him in 72. There is the lead car as Andy Smith runs wide and Junior Wayman is closing on him. There's one more lap to go. One more lap to go at Bellevue and Mickey Preston is on target to win a Formula One stock car final for the first time in his life. He's got the class act of Formula One stock car racing. Junior Wayman behind him. The gold roof car is closing. There's Rob Speak in the middle of the pair of them. But here comes Mickey Preston to win the final here at Bellevue tonight and write himself into the history books. The man from Macclesfield wins the Ray Tilsley Memorial Trophy. An absolutely fantastic drive. The first ever Formula One stock car final at Bellevue. And Mickey Preston not only wins it, but also his personal first ever F1 stock car final. A very happy man he is going to be. The results see Mickey Preston the winner from Frankie Wayman Jr. second. Third goes to Matt Bennett. John Lund comes home in fourth place ahead of Dave Johnson fifth. Frankie Wayman Sr. completes the top six. Stock car racing has returned to Manchester in fine style. A very enthusiastic crowd have had a great night, many of them new to the sport as well. And that is exactly the sort of audience that is likely to come back in a few months' time to Bellevue when Formula One stock car racing returns after a very successful baptism here this evening. Mickey Preston celebrates a victory and he can be very, very proud. He's seen off the best in Formula One stock car racing at Bellevue tonight. To win the auto parts at Hawford Super Prix in association with Motoring News, he's joined on the podium by Junior Wayman and by Matt Bennett. But with all the celebrating completed, it's time for a word with a jubilant Mickey Preston. Mickey, a great race, but he was closing right up at the end, wasn't he, Junior? I didn't have a clue. I didn't know who was there. There was a lot of back markers and I just didn't know who were there. Now, your first Formula One final win and the Ray Tilsley Trophy as well. A very historic moment for you. Yeah, very happy, very pleased with it. Must be because I've painted the car. Yeah, it looks very smart. What have you had to do to it over the winter? Uh, just about everything. There's only the back axle. that I didn't take the back axle off and it didn't take the engine out. Otherwise, everything's been taken off and put back on. Now, what about the track? First meeting here. Looks good. Uh, yeah, it's very good. It's tricky, very tight, but very pleased. Very good track. You had a good night? Yeah, excellent.